Alrighty, everybody, what is going on? Welcome back to another CyperX video banger. In today's video, I have some video clips that are extremely important for each and every single individual listening to be paying attention to. We're going to be listening to Jeremy Allaire and also some Ripple representatives and then some representatives from some other financial institutions. So listen to what they have to say. I cannot stress enough. Remember, here at CyperX, we don't pump you with hopium. We don't give you any price predictions that are unrealistic and short-lived. We give you guys value. So please pay attention to what these highly reputable individuals are saying. Is that we're I just, you know, ideas on a napkin 10 years ago are coming to pass. And so that's kind of where we are today. But I think to the last part of your question, um, you know, this is, uh, you know, this is still a very nascent technology and a nascent industry, even though we've built a sizable business, um, you know, the, the amount of activity that's ahead is extraordinary, right? I think the, the market for electronic money, the, the market for the kind of uh, payment systems in the world, and the way in which that's going to be absorbed by an internet financial system is extraordinary. So I, I actually feel like we're kind of at the starting line now. It took us 10 years, uh, but we're now kind of truly at the starting line for building this out in a, in a much more meaningful way. So Jeremy, it's, it's five years from now. Let's say we're at the beginning of 2029. Am I going to have a stable coin, your coin, circle coin, on my phone, and I'll be able to walk into any vendor at that point and transact? Or when do you think yeah. that happens? I, I think so. So I, if you think about where we are today, um, a lot of the technology that, that we, you know, like digital currencies, stable coins, blockchains, digital wallets, all this stuff, as you probably know, being active in the space, right? still complex, There's still you need to know too much, it's too confusing. And, and so the key thing that's happening right now is there are huge improvements being made in what I'll just broadly call blockchain infrastructure. What I'll just broadly call blockchain infrastructure. Look, Ripple at its core is a blockchain infrastructure company serving enterprises. We started with payments and financial institutions. We've moved into custody, a lot of overlap with those same financial institutions. Uh, but we're gonna expand with that same thematic of infrastructure, infrastructure, enterprise-based, uh, and it served us well. And I think this is what, linking to very, what, what has been overall said in the panel, um, what's happening at the moment. It's, it's very much this infrastructure that is being built for tokenization across different parts of the value chain that really needs to happen. And sometimes that might look slow, hopefully in retro perspective, if we look back in five years and 10 years, we say, this is exactly what needed to happen for us to be able to adopt. The, the institutional guys, the smaller scale ones, from a trading point of view, it's taken some time to build it up. It's taken some time to build it up. And I think a lot of the focus now has been on taking a step back and saying, okay, how do we become adults in the space? And this is actually what crypto needs, right? If you talk about institutions, you have your crypto native institutions, but you also have a lot of guys on the sideline who we have conversations with regulators at financial institutions on the street, and they're all still looking at the space, but they're looking at it as a fishbowl methodology. And the reason why is, well, yes, volumes are lower, but it also gives you time now to put in the right infrastructure. But it also gives you time now to put in the right infrastructure just broadly called blockchain infrastructure. It's, it's, it's sort of like when we went from dial-up internet, which was a pain in the butt and was complex and it was slow, to broadband internet with like mobile devices, right? Then all of a sudden, like gazillions of apps grew, the user experience got really good, and, and the complexity of the internet went into the background. So over the next one to two years, the complexity of blockchain and crypto wallets and all this, it's going to go into the background. I think it's important to um, look at the, the big picture for... Uh blockchain and um, the uh, genie is out of the bottle, blockchain's in the market and it's being applied to today's world. That's having a, a fairly big impact. And my view is there'll be a moderate to large impact applying blockchain technology that's out and available off shelf to improve some of the processing that you know financial companies have today. But the big value is looking ahead to the point in time where the technology becomes mature enough to rethink and redefine how money is owned, moved, and utilized. And that will be seismic. So when I look at what's happening with, with blockchain tech, um, I look at it very similar, which is basically we've gone through this cycle of like raw early technology to an overhyped cycle to now, it's like, I, I, I would say we're in like the 2002 of the internet where all of a sudden the broadband pipes are getting laid down. All of a sudden the broadband pipes are getting laid down. And I would say like, you know, hey, TradFi has recognized this has reached critical mass. It's not gonna go away. Crypto is not a fad. And now they're starting to build 
or co-build the pipes and the plumbing. It's reached critical mass. It's not going to go away. Crypto is not a fad. And now they're starting to build or co-build the pipes and the plumbing. All of a sudden, the broadband pipes are getting laid down. We're very constructive on how we see it moving forward because if we put the right pipes in, rebuilding it from the ground up sort of pushes it in the right direction for us. Because if we put the right pipes in, rebuilding it from the ground up sort of pushes it in the right direction for us. All of a sudden, the broadband pipes are getting laid down. All of a sudden, the, the software that makes the experience of the internet you know, far, far better is, is coming online. That's where we are with this. And so essentially, you need legal certainty. So you need legal certainty on how these are treated and how they're used. That's happening. You need scalability. So you need infrastructure that can readily support both from a user experience perspective and a, and a raw throughput perspective, the kinds of things where you, could, you can do internet scale things. That's happening right now. Um, and, and then you need, a, you need a free market environment where you've got you know, entrepreneurs and developers and other things building. And I think that, is, um, that has happened. And I think we're going to see another pretty significant wave of invested capital into people building on this um, now that we've kind of you know, I think we're clearing away some of the debris, as it were. So I, I think um, my, my view is that, um, that that kind of mainstream catalyst and, and the experiences around those are, are really right in front of us. And we'll see um, you know, over the next three to five years that uh, you know, sort of scaling out to where you know, literally a billion or two billion plus people are interacting with this on a regular basis. You know, over the next three to five years that uh, you know, sort of scaling out to where, you know, literally a billion or two billion plus people are interacting with this on a regular basis. Uh, and people tend to overestimate these kind of dynamics maybe, uh, you know, in the short term, but then underestimate it in, in the long term, which is... Uh, you know. uh, and whereas I would agree that the, the future is inevitably going to be the adoption uh, of DLT technology and tokenization uh, across traditional markets and tokenization of real-world assets, uh, the time that's going to take in reality, I think, is a five to ten year time frame. Uh, the time that's going to take in reality, I think, is a five to ten year time frame. And, you know, the danger is that, that people get too excited too soon about the real speed at which this can happen. Because the network effect required for everyone to start trading and holding tokens, it feels like we're a long way away from that. Ripple was set up 10 years ago um, to be the company to find real world use cases for the XRP ledger and XRP, the digital asset. Uh, separate company uh, from, the, from the ledger and the asset, of course. And we really identified very early on that cross-border payments and moving value across borders was where we wanted to play and go after. And we've been doing that for 10 years. Uh, it takes time. Uh, it takes time. And it's taken a lot of effort to, to build a network now over 70 countries. I think that you know, we have um, both uh, a, a securities agency that has taken a, a particular view in terms of their ability to regulate this or to enforce in this. You've got other agencies taking a different view. Congress clearly has to act here. And I think it's unlikely in the current Congress that we're going to see comprehensive crypto markets regulation. So that'll be a 2025 thing. Regulation. So that'll be a 2025 thing. So now that you have all these perspectives from these interesting leading experts, so let me show you all this first document. I said to you all on the X space, this is a great perspective on why this is all taking so long. As you all can see, this is a document from January this year labeled Payment Trends Banks Need to Be Aware of in 2024. And here you can see one key issue for banks in 2024 is how they can adapt and replace their existing technology stack while keeping their services running, minimizing disruption for customers. So taken into consideration, this is one of the many reasons as to why this transformation is taking so long. But you can clearly see them mention that they are replacing, it says right here, replacing their existing technology stack. That is a monumental find right there. Again, smash that thumbs up button and subscribe. Now, here is another document where I posted to you on the X space and I said, trillion dollar opportunity. The level of crypto adoption today is equivalent to the internet adoption in 2000. Take into consideration what Jeremy Allaire said that we're in the age, right, 2002 and the early internet days comparable to where we're at via blockchain and cryptocurrency adoption. Literally, word for word, that's exactly what Jeremy Allaire said. And here you can see a document from 2023 confirming that the number of internet users back in 2000 amounted to around 361 million or 5.9.1% excuse me, of the, of the world's population at that time. And here you can see in this document, it says 
There is a $10 trillion opportunity in this market by 2030. I think that that's a low ball personally. But if we come over here, it goes on to confirm that there is an estimated 431 million crypto owners, which amounts to roughly around the same percentage of the population as of time of recording. And you heard Jeremy Allaire confirm that over the next couple of years, what are we bound to see? The next one to three billion users in this space. So think about that. Right now, you're part of a population of only 400 and around 30 million people, give or take. It fluctuates between 430 and 450 based off the research that I've done. But we are so early, people, and you need to zoom out and understand that, okay? Now, that also coincides with all the gentlemen saying that, you know, the vast majority of individuals think too forward, too fast in the short term, but then don't have a long-term perspective. So here, again, I'm not an individual in this space telling you all, 2025, 2026, 2027 for no reason. I'm not sitting here just like waking up in the morning and thinking, oh, I'm going to go tell the world that none of this is going to happen until 2025 and beyond. No, it's because of the research that I've done that's generated my bias and my opinion. So I'm just going to show you all some supportive fundamentals. And this is just three of the many that we have in the Cyprex private research chat that have the dates 2025 and beyond on them. So here you can see this is a document from Deloitte. And if you have more credentials than individual representatives at Deloitte, speak now or forever hold your peace. If you don't, then you should, put, you know, think, consider what they have to say, right? Why do people fight large organizations like Deloitte that help business organizations and institutions with digital transformation when the documents literally tell you right to your face? Here it says, in the EU, patchwork of MECA and local regimes will apply between 2024 and 2026. So there is a mention of 2026, again, confirming that this could take until then. And so you have to have that long-term perspective. Here it also says the UK framework for unbacked digital assets is less developed. Detailed rules will start to emerge this year, but are unlikely to be finalized until the end of 2024. It says compliance deadlines will not kick in before well into 2025. So there's that confirmation that, again, Jeremy Allaire said on a panel discussion for the world to hear. And here is a document from a major consulting firm, i.e. Deloitte, telling you all pretty much the same exact thing. We're not here at Cyprex telling you all this information to FUD or fear you out or anything like that. We're just trying to provide value so you can see that if a massive bull run explosion doesn't happen in 2024 due to lack of regulatory clarity, that should already be anticipated and calculated into your mental, you know, how you mentally handle this game over the next couple of months, right? Because it, it, they're telling you all this, right? So it should be of no surprise if all throughout 2024, we see a bunch of up and down bull crap price movement, no bullish, um, you know, explosion in the market due to lack of regulatory clarity and institutions not comfortable onboarding themselves into this space yet. Here is another document. Shout out to the Cyprex researchers. I couldn't do this without them. They provide so much value. Open banking in the GCCC, an overview of regulatory frameworks, market trends, and the overall outlook. And here you can see them mention <clears throat> 2027, expected to have the highest consumer adoption globally. So, you know, that's confirming what Jeremy Allaire said, or over the next two to three years, we're set to see the next one to three billion people on board into this space. Here's the date, 2027. Again, we're not making that up. Then also here it says, the UAE aims to establish clear regulations and standards through its FIT program by 2026. So there's another 2026 deadline. Uh, and then here, last but not least, and I'll leave you guys with this one. Again, we're not here to pump fear or anything like that in the market. I'm just showing you guys key dates so you can mentally prepare yourself in case it takes that long. I have a long-term perspective. I've always invested into this space with a 2030 mindset. Like none of this is really truly going to scale into the hundreds of trillions of dollars until 2030. I hope that I'm wrong. I'm not saying that that's going to happen. I hope that this happens over the next couple of months slash years, way before 2030. I don't want to wait just like you don't want to wait until 2030 for all this to happen. But if it does, we need to take into consideration that they've been telling us that that's most likely what's going to happen. We're seeing dates of 2025 and beyond, right? The vast majority of individuals in this space are not doing this type of research. No, they're trying to suck you in. They're trying to get views. They're trying to get clickbait likes and all this stuff to pump up their YouTube channels. We're not here to do that for you all. We're here to provide value and research, okay? So last but not least, we have this document. And I think this was also shared by, by 801 XRP. If you guys don't follow this individual right here, make sure that you go give him a follow as well. He provides lots of valuable information on his X profile as well. So here it says, however, the following 12 months saw an extraordinary boom in regulation across the globe overall. But then it gives some very interesting highlights. 
from these overall organizations, very highly reputable organizations like the G20, Financial Action Task Force, FSB, IMF, so on and so forth. But then here it gives some key dates. And what I want you all to pay attention to down here at the bottom is where it says in June of this year, Michael stablecoin rules come into effect. So that will be interesting to see if we see any volatile price action once that gets approved in June of this year. So around summertime. And then here at the end of the year, it says December 30th, Mika rules for crypto asset service providers come into effect. And we know that there's a period after that rule comes into effect where banking institutions have to implement that. And I believe that's anywhere between 12 to 18 months off the top of my head. Just double check that. But there again is confirmation that this is most likely not going to happen until the end of 2024, rolling into 2025. So be mentally prepared for that. As always, bringing you guys the realest information, share this video breakdown, smash that thumbs up button and subscribe to the platform. Ripple in some way, shape or form had their hand in this information today. As always, we're not here riding Ripple and XRP. I'm just showing you all that they are the ones talking about building an infrastructure. They have Ripple representatives on stage talking about helping financial institutions build the new plumbing to this new financial system. I'm not making that up. I'm not delusional. I'm just showing you all the information that is readily available in every single, the crazy part is, last but not least, okay? The crazy part is, is every single one of those video breakdowns that I just showed you has less than 200 views, which goes to show that the vast majority of individuals, remember 430 million crypto users are not paying attention. So if you take the 430 million crypto users and then the 200 people that are sh that are watching, sitting down and watching the video breakdowns that I just showed you all, I'm even a very small percentage of the already small percentage of individuals that are actually involved in this space. So focus on who you should be paying attention to and where you get your information from, which is why I'm showing you all this stuff. Please, people, wake up, okay? Smash that thumbs up button for us. Please, we do appreciate the love and support. It helps this platform grow and boost these valuable videos out to more individuals like yourselves seeking real information in this crypto space. As always, please do your own research. I'm not telling you guys to go out there and buy digital assets, but just open your eyes and see what's going to happen over the next five to 10 years. Zoom out, have a long-term perspective. If you want short-term gains, then obviously, of course, what you need to do is take a more day trading approach, learn how to leverage, learn how to trade, learn how to read fundamentals and learn these intraday price swings. We also offer those services at Cyprex by teaching you how we do that. If you don't want to do that, then don't get manipulated because you buy the digital asset, for example, XRP or HBAR, any of these other utility driven assets, and they don't moon in the next month or two right? When you now know this information, you now know that these large financial institutions have a zoomed out perspective and they all are telling you to do the same thing, to have a zoomed out perspective, to get educated, to get involved, but to understand that this is all going to take time. So I'm done my rant. Many blessings to you guys. Be cognizant, be aware, and I'll see you all in the next video breakdown. Mm -hmm.